Thank you very much for being with us, and we hope to see you all again very soon. Until then, bye bye, and we may come again. <laughs> female companionship. Well, follow the directions in this book and learn how to meet beautiful women. Now we want to smell nice, don't we? So what's the first thing we do? No, the first thing we do is we take our clothes off. Then we make sure we are underarm fresh. <laughs> Bow through that super strong cologne. On the face, on the body, splash it all over. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> now we're ready to meet those beautiful women. Let's start with the old drop the handkerchief routine. And when she hands it to you, you're halfway there. But here comes one now. succeed, what do we do? That's right, we try, try, try again. Now, beneath the bosom of every woman beats the heart of the nurse. But here come two real ones. You pull a faint, and in next to no time, a soft, gentle hand is stroking your hot, fevered brow. Oh, well, 
we can't win them all, can we? Let's try the knight in shining armor approach. Now here's a damsel in distress. You come to her aid, and she will show you her gratitude. the park luxury car. Better still, sit in it. After all, you didn't actually say it was your car, did you? phone up a movie agency, arrange to have a big tough stunt guy insult her. You come to her rescue, he does a couple of fake falls, runs off, and you're her hero! of the book, you are now alone with the girl of your dreams. <laughs> and all's well that ends well. Thank <laughs> you. 
programme for you this afternoon. We've got sailing from hailing, uh, we've got sledding from reading, shooting from tooting, and carting from... <laughs> <laughs> on the football front, we'll be looking at the midfield players, at the defenders, and of course at the strikers. In particular, we'll, we'll be looking at the defending pair of Burnleys, and then we're going to take a good look at this striking pair of Bristols. <laughs> this striking pair of Br Br Bristol Cities. Br Bristol City Rover. Um, we're starting off with cycling, and cycling, it's the Tour de Force, which comes to you today from Barnsley. It's just as we expected. Eddie Mux, the Cuban-Irish whirlwind, has left the pack and looks like breaking his own world record. Just look at that man, go! <laughs> and here we have the true professional. Cool, calm, confident, completely unarmed. <laughs> Putting back some of the liquid lost in perspiration and, uh... <clears throat> Eddie Mux up. Uh, up, Eddie Mux. He really is phenomenal, 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 extremely good. There's just no stopping this man. Mind that dog! <laughs> well, here are the results of the all men's inter services nude leapfrog competition. And they are Army 99. Air Force 96, Navy 2, with leading seaman Anstreder being disqualified. <laughs> well, now it's time for the Ladies' Bowls Torment. Ladies' Bowls Tournament, tournament, <clears throat> which comes today from Wilchester. Mrs. Cartwright is way out in front, and the competition is very keen. These ladies are determined that she won't win again this year. <laughs> Um, it's time. It's <laughs> uh, time now for the um, athletics from Dimpton, and for the first time, you're going, going to be seeing mixed track events. Uh, this is Frida Dobbs with the Toddbridge Harriers, and her own she goes. It's a lovely sight, is that not? And, and it's a good one. It's a good one. But here comes Hamish Hallmark with the Sterling Academicals, and I think he's going to show them a thing or two today. I'm pretty sure of it. And. Uh, they seem to enjoy the audience there, look, around he goes, and, uh, oh, uh, he seem, they seem to be having a little, uh, contretemps, one or two uh, members of the audience there, uh, <laughs> sitting in the front row, <laughs> getting a good view, <laughs> and around he goes, and he lets go, and... <laughs> it's the long jump, and here comes Jerry Lucas, and it's, no, it's not at the best, it's not at the best at all, no, no. But I think that Sid Tidworth here will pick up a point or two, here he comes now. <laughs> Well, now it's time for, for fishing, for angling, and uh, for the angling, we are going over to, to, grum to Grumble on the Green, where the, ah, where, <clears throat> to Grumble on the, on the Green, where um, Har Harry, uh, Harry Hooker is waiting to tell us all about the fishing. Over to you, ha happy Harry, Harry Hooker. As you join us, the news is that Carl Nutter, who won last year's competition, is not having a very good day. seem to have any luck at all. <laughs> well, well it's, it's over now for uh, to, to, to Frampton, and for news of the show jumping, here is a Teddy Trip. Where I'm hoping to speak to one of Britain's top show jumpers, Mrs. Biscuit. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. 
Now, Mrs. Missy, yes. I, I know there are a lot of horse lovers watching today. I'm sure there are some very horse lovers watching today. <laughs> they shouldn't talk so much, should they? <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Could you, um, could you tell us about yourself? Well, yes, I could. You see, I, I'm afraid recently I've got into a rather, rather disgusting habit. What's that? This one I'm wearing. <laughs> I just use it for cleaning out the stables, that's all. <laughs> and your husband? Oh, he's just gone for a pony and trap. <laughs> he, he doesn't ride quite so often now, owing to the boil, you know. <laughs> But of course, you love it at any time. Oh, any time, yes, I love it any time. Yes. How long has it been? <laughs> well, it's been different lengths at different times, of course. You see. I mean, how long has what been? Uh, since you started show jumping. Oh, I started when I was 17. That'd be about eight years ago. <laughs> yes, easy, easy, yes. <laughs> but of course, I've got a lovely husband and, of course, lovely darling Harold. <laughs> uh, there's no jealousy? Oh, none whatsoever, no, it's sweet. Just so long as he gets his oats regular, that's all he worries about. <laughs> I was talking about your husband. So was I. <laughs> I'm happy to say. <laughs> uh, how many hours a day do you ride? Well, I should think about six hours a day as a rule, yes. Yeah. They say when I ride, I look like part of the horse. <laughs> they never say which part, of course. <laughs> But really, all those hours each yes. day, bouncing up and down in the saddle, does indeed give you a headache? No, quite the reverse. <laughs> Gives the horse a headache. Ah, I know what you were thinking, you naughty television. Don't do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. And it's, uh, it's darling Harold who'll be going with you to the Olympics. Yes, in Canada. Yes, I'm so glad, yes. Uh, how do you think you'll get on? Well, I expect my husband will give me a bunker. <laughs> He frequently does, you know, and able to get on to the... Uh, in the uh, event. Yes, well, in any event, I suppose. <laughs> yes, in any event, we will put our best hoof forward, oh, yeah. eh? <laughs> Over the years, you must have won an awful lot of trophies. Oh, I've won a lot of awful trophies, I have really, yes. I've won 24 medals, 12 statuettes, and a shield inscribed to the fastest mayor in Surrey. <laughs> have you ever won a loving cup? No, I've never been in for that sort of competition. <laughs> I didn't know they gave cups for it, do they? <laughs> I'm sure I should win one if I went in for one. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Mm. I'm sure our viewers would love to see you, darling Harold. Well, do you think perhaps you could coax no, him out? I'm sorry because at the moment, you see, I'm just about to give him his tranquilizing pill, you see. He hasn't been, hasn't been terribly well just lately, you know. Oh, will he swallow that? Oh, he'll swallow anything, yes. Uh, no, the thing is, you see, I have to give him this by a very, very devious method, you see. What I do, you see, I get this tube here, you see, I place the pill there, and the other tube, the end of the tube in his mouth, you see, and I blow, you see, and that's how he takes the pill. I'll show you, look. <laughs> I'm afraid darling Harold blew first. <laughs> Won't that have an effect on your, um... No, it'll have no effect on me whatsoever. <laughs> no, that's all right. no, it's happened before. <laughs> well, I can't stand here talking. I have to look after the stables, and the world just keeps piling up in there. <laughs> In that case, I'll say goodbye. Yes, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll try and get darling Harold just to say bye-bye for you. Come along, darling Harold. No, no, leave Enoch alone. Never mind about Margaret or Tony. They're... Yes, I know. Don't do that. There's a good one. Say, say goodnight, darling Harold. Come along. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is lovely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, well, it's, um, over now. <coughs> for tennis. At Wilmington. We hope we don't have any incidents like we did last year. You may remember that the, um, Vicar of St. Arthur's last year sat in the front row with a newly starched collar. Cut his head off. <laughs> hope we don't get anything like that. So, it's, we're going to have a look at the competition which is for the New Frontiers Bra Cup. And in particular, we'll be taking a jolly good look at the women's doubles. <laughs> where the Roberts sisters, uh, Terry and Libby, are taking on the Clunk sisters, Frida and Ava.
is about to leap the net to congratulate her opponents with some <laughs> Say goodbye to you because uh, we won't have time, unfortunately, for the uh, <laughs> wrestling. I know you enjoy so much, but do see it again next week and we'll show you some more worlds of sport.
I want an oar! It is not generally known that the island of Luana, or Polynesia to be Pacific. <laughs> oh, God. Has the largest female population in the world. Uh, when I say large, I don't mean numbers. I mean they are big. <laughs> God, they are big! <laughs> Oh, the pains are coming back. But <laughs> the average size of the average Luanese woman is 52. 19. Because nothing will grow in the shade out there. <laughs> 38. But of course, they are not everyone's cups of tea. But personally, I look at it like this. <laughs> They make my wife look like a midget, because my wife's only about, uh, about, uh, uh, about so high. And God, she is stupid. The other day, they gave her the key to the city. She locked herself out. Thank God. But while I was in Luana, I had the pleasure several times of meeting the chief there and his 17 wives. Seventeen, God, all that meat and no potatoes. <laughs> and he was a funny little fellow, with white hair and wizened old little gnarled hands, about thirty. And he wrote a very beautiful song once, and it was only four verses long, and I have translated it into English. In English, it is called, She Was Only a Stockbroker's Daughter, But Everyone Got His Share. <laughs> <laughs> Please yourself. Well, <laughs> he wrote these four verses, and before he could write the fifth verse, he got trapped in a revolving door with two hula hula dancers. Big ones! <laughs> and he was massaged to death. <laughs> if you gotta go, that's the way to go, it? <laughs> However, I'm gonna sing his song. Now, there's only four verses, they're quite cute. So here we go with his Luanese. On the beach in Waikiki, there lives a lovely maid Who cannot keep her body still when her favorite song is played But if you sing the chorus in Hawaiian, they say that she'll appear Not only will she dance, but she'll give you her souvenir Her song goes Manuna! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Peter, Peter. No. Chuna. Huh? <laughs> 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 
money <clears throat> a little bit quicker. <laughs> One day she bought a book so she could learn to water ski. Then she spent a fortnight looking for a sloping sea. But when she did it in her long grass skirt, the excitement never stops. And all the farmers say they love the way that she rotates her crops to the tune of... Walule! Ulamaane! Ulamaa da na wa na ane! Cavities are taking them and covered them with chocolate! Drink a pint of milk a day! Ooh Manuna! Like a pigeon on a hot pavement. I'd love to see her in 3D. That's my room number. Third verse. We lay upon the sand one day beneath the cloudless skies. I brought her a crimson rose to match her bloodshot eyes. Oh, won't you get a little bolder? My shy young thing, I said. She got a little bolder and she dropped it on my head. <laughs> Manuna? Reminds me, I must get some hot cross buns for each. <laughs> Hang on to your hernia belts. Fourth and last verse, okay. She said, you give me half a crown and I will read your palm. Then she saw my love line went halfway up me arm. So now she's changed her prices, although she's just as willing. It's big fat men at two pound ten and little boys a shilling. <laughs> Come on, kids, all right! Disappoint them. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a roll on the drum. <laughs> manuna, Manuna, Manuna. Yeah, just a minute, what does Manuna mean? It is what girls say to boy while walking through Cowfield. She say, don't tread in Manuna. <laughs> Is this your foot? Uh, pardon? Does, does, does this foot belong to you? Oh, uh, this book. Book? It's a book. It's it a book? Yes. I thought it was a foot. <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what then is foot? Uh, that's foot. No, that is shoe. Surely that is shoe. <laughs> that is a shoe. It is a shoe. And that is a foot. And that is a foot. <laughs> <laughs> Learning all the time. <laughs> I know another one. Knee. That is a knee. No, no, no. That's a knee. Yeah, that is a knee. Masculine knee. Feminine knee. No, no. That's a knee. Oh, uh, I could I have my... Um... Oh, I give you back your foot. No, no, no. Shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> Learning all the time. <laughs> I'm, I must write down the new word I learn. The professor says, when you get a new word, write it down. <laughs> and he says, I want the right and written right. I don't want the right and written rotten. <laughs> That's what he says to the professor. <laughs> oh dear, I have, I have left my foot at home. Book. My book, my book at home. Never mind, I shall remember. When I get a new word, it goes straight up here in my bum. <laughs> What? No, no, your head. This is a your head? No, this is my head, huh? and that is your head. Ah, this is my head, and that is your head. <laughs> Learning all the time. <laughs> what is bum? Well, it's not a nice word. We, we don't say it. What do you say? Well, we say um, a bottom. 
Don't say bum, say bottom. <laughs> what is a bottom? Well, it's a... it's sort of... Oh, it's, it's a naughty one. Oh, it's a naughty one. Bottom. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> this is my bottom. <laughs> this is my bottom. That is your bottom. <laughs> Learning all the time. What, what watch is it? Pardon? Have you the correct watch on you? Oh. Oh, six, oh, watch? Such much? <laughs> I shall go across the park now to the cafe and, and have fish and chips. Oh, do you like our fish and chips? No, I hate your fish and chips, but that's the only thing I know how to ask for. Uh, there are other things besides well, fish and chips. I don't know chips. what is, you know. Uh, what do you think of uh, steak and kidney pudding? Well, uh, oh, oh, oh. Kate, Try it. Steak, steak and... Kate and Sydney who? No, no. <laughs> steak and kidney pudding. Date and kinky pudding. No, no, no. Kidney. You kidding me, pudding? No, no. You kidding me, pudding? Kidney. Pudding. 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 Oh dear, I'm sorry. That was naughty. I must not do that. I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. I like you. I do. I like you, bust. You mustn't say that. Why not? It's true. Of all the girls I meet in London, I like you, Bus. <laughs> no, no. You mean best. Best. Best, best. That is more good. Yes. Ah, yes. what is Bus? <laughs> I, I don't think I want to explain that. I have said, I have upset you. I have said naughty words. I'm, I'm always doing that. It, it's, it's all right. No, 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 Honestly, no. Don't, don't worry. No, it's no, right. no, 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 no. I am a terrible man. I, I always, every time I open my mouth, I put my food in it. It's, well, it's look, terrible. No, 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 no. I should go across to the cafe and have fish and chips by myself. Well, look. Just, oh, why didn't you come back to my place? I couldn't do that. Look, I've got enough here for two. <laughs> no. What would your mother and father say? I live on my own. Look, there's a 51 bus. <laughs> Uh, there's a 51 bus. Yeah. If we hurry, we can make it. Naked? Why do you say naked? No, no, make it. Make it. Get on the bus. Get on the bus is make it. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what is naked? I'll explain that when we get there. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good, that's good. Oh, German? Hmm? Polish? No, I come from Bradford. Only you see, if I don't talk foreign, I'll get out. <laughs> come in, my bus. From California comes Hold Back the Wind, starring Vilma Bucket as Julie. Miss Jordan, I give you my word, all you have is a very simple throat infection. But doctor, if it's a simple throat infection, why do I have to take my clothes off? <laughs> also starring Ted and Tilly Todd as the Dunnies. <laughs> Well, what, what the hell's that for? That's for being a lousy lover. <laughs> What's that for? That's for knowing the difference. <laughs> Special guest co-star, Jock Trap as Oddball. <laughs> Special guest star's co-star, Hector Proctor as Dr. Octor. No, my dear. Just because you keep on wanting to take all your clothes off doesn't mean to say that you have to go to the hospital. <laughs> I can put you up at my place. <laughs> and George Pillock as Joe. I know you're down there making that damn vote, but you never finish your way, you butterfly brain. Yesterday you started digging up the garden. Now you're building a boat. Five will get you dead. It won't look anything like a boat. Well, I wouldn't be seen dead. And Tiddles the Wonder Cat. As one eye. <laughs> this week's episode, No Time to Dicker. Have a good cry. The more you cry, the less you piss fire. Oh, you had no right calling me a bitch. You take it back. All right, you're not a bitch. Now, finish up your lassie and go bury your bone, will you? Oh, oh my God. Oh, now, don't tell me that AIDS not fresh. Uh, did I say it wasn't fresh? No, what are you picking at it for? I'm looking for the wishbone. <laughs> Why don't you get your egg from the farm direct like I tell you? 
Cut out a middleman, that's how I made my money, by cutting out the middleman. Well, I'll have some more porridge then. God, I've had three slices already. <laughs> Big Daddy, yeah. I don't look 35, do I? Not anymore, you don't know. <laughs> the preacher says I got the face of a 16-year-old girl. Well, you want to give it back, you're getting it all wrinkled. <laughs> and stop using my underpants as a pot holder. Why not? You do. <laughs> oh, Big Daddy, can't we go on a second honeymoon? What, are you sadist or something? <laughs> kissy, kissy. Oh, God. I've seen better puckers in the top of an open duffel bag. <laughs> oh, God, she's ugly. Anybody's entitled to be ugly, but she abuses the privilege. <laughs> and to think I could have married Big Jenny. <laughs> Remember Big Jenny, eh? He used to, he used to go drinking with her two brothers. God, she was big. Oh, she was big. Oh, I used to love to make her laugh. <laughs> so much of her had a good time. <laughs> hey, where you going, boy? At the play. What, with them holes in your pants? No, with the kids across the street. <laughs> coming over. Well, last time I seen a leg like that, there was a message attached to it. I don't know what she'll think of us. We haven't even got a lock on the lavatory door. Well, ain't nothing there worth stealing, is there? Uh, Lucy Jardine ain't gonna want to marry a fella don't have a clean shirt. Oh, God, you can marry Lucy Jardine, boy. She's 16 but, years old. I know, but she looks 12. <laughs> But boy, you're not ready for the responsibility yet, are you? Look at you. I mean, I mean, when you went to buy your grandpa a money order for $10, you told the clerk to rub out the price because it's a gift. <laughs> you went to have your photograph taken, and the man said to you, you wanted it full face. What did you do? You stuffed your socks in your mouth. <laughs> you give all your money to the bookies. Why don't you give it straight to the cops and cut out the middleman? That's how I made my money, for cutting out the middleman. Kid, you come in here this instant and you get yourself dressed properly. Uh, don't be late. I'm never late. You was late for our wedding. Not late enough. <laughs> and when she gets here, don't go on about that house of ours up on the hill. It's a beautiful house. Well, you could have named it different, passing fair or passing cloud, but passing wind? <laughs> I like passing wind. <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, as I'll live and breathe heavily, ain't that a little Jardine girl? Hey, you come here, will you? <laughs> well, never. Did you call me mister? Oh, God. Would anybody in his right mind call you mister? <laughs> Why, well, you're big daddy, Ken Kay. And you're little Lucy Jardine, ain't you? <laughs> My God, you've grown out. Oh. I reckon you could take a shower without getting your feet wet. Well, I bet, I bet he could, too. Oh, there you go. I like a girl. I like a girl who gives you a bit back there, speaks up for herself, you know. Well, I always give tit for tat. In that case, tat. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Well, that's as far as you can go. <laughs> Oh. You get under my skin. There's no, you get under mine. There's more room. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you sit down there, kid, like you did when you was a little, huh? Now remember my innocence. Oh, yeah, remember. <laughs> <laughs> Memories. <laughs> sit down. I'm an old man. It's all right there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I hear you. <clears throat> I hear you. I hear you want to marry my boy Ken, right? That's right. You know what the great delight of my life is? Passing wind. <laughs> One day, that and all my money will belong to Jed and his wife. I know. Is that why you want to marry him, then, huh? Partly. <laughs> why do you marry me, then? Have it all now. Cut out the middleman. That's how I made my money, by cutting out the middleman. <laughs> well, now, churchy face, I might just consider that. <laughs> <clears throat> Would you mind being a little Christian and turn on the other cheek? <laughs> right, oh God, you're sitting on my keys. <laughs> no, I tell her lights, my torch. 
<laughs> but the thing is, <laughs> okay, you, you don't mean that, now, do you? I do. We could have such fun oh, no, together no, no. all day and... Oh, not no, no, long. Now, no, see, no, see here, young lady. No, see here. We'd be no, so no, right no. for each other, just you and I no. alone. But well, I'd show you things you ain't never even heard of. I'd thrill you like you never, ever dreamed. Oh, oh, oh! Dead boy! Oh, get to the phone, boy! Are you hurt, babe? Ever hear of anybody being hurt good? <laughs> Would you like something to bite on? <laughs> not, not at the moment. I, I had a biscuit for my tea. Dead, dead boy. There's a good boy. Who did you get? Did you get Dr. Schultz? Uh, Dr. Dr. Watts? I didn't call a doctor, Big Daddy. You didn't call a doctor? No. I called an undertaker. You called an undertaker? Yeah, I did like you always told me to do, Big Daddy. I cut out the middleman. <laughs> That's my boy! Ha, 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 ha. 
Charlie and could get my key. We've got three Beaujolais and three Chianti. Everything OK? No, it's not. Perkins has gone to Scotland. Oh, no! His mother's ill. Oh, what a time to choose! I rang the agency and they said they'd try and send somebody else. Today of all days. <laughs> <laughs> Are you from the agency? Eh? Oh, yes. <laughs> you come in. Oh, thank you. Good evening, heavenly body. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I say good evening, heavenly body. I think he means good evening, everybody. Oh. You go on. <laughs> you're fat. I beg your pardon? I say you're fat. Oh. Is, this, is this your fat? Oh, my fat, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's nice, yes. Yeah. Oh, it's very nice, yes. And who are you? I am very well, thank you. <laughs> Your name? My, my, my card. <laughs> a crow's a rid. <laughs> nice. Mr. Chow Mean, handyman. In what way are you handy? I rive round the corner. <laughs> but he doesn't mention manservant or waiter. Have you waited a table before? Yeah, I a good waiter. And valet? Valley! Valley good waiter, yes! <laughs> I'm Plobbery, not necessarily. But Plobbery, best waiter in Hawk Lake Britain. <laughs> Come along here, Sally's here. Uh, uh, look here. Yeah. Uh, when our guests arrive, mm -hmm. pick up a tray and say, would you consider some refreshment? I sit on a what? <laughs> Have a drink. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. That's nice. Yeah. Very warming. <laughs> That's vodka. Ah, uh, vodka. No, vodka. Oh, vodka. Oh, yeah, vodka. It's spelled with a wee, not with a W. <laughs> yeah, got that. Yeah. Sherry? Shelly. No, Sherry. Shelly. No, Sherry. You're saying Shelly. Shelly. You see, it's not difficult when you try. <laughs> the bell! The bell! Yeah, yeah, yeah nice, yeah. Well, answer it. All right, I know where you down, madam. Oh, God. All right, then I know where you down, God. <laughs> no. It's Mr. McGee, sir. Certainly, Mr. McGee, sir. No, I am madam. Uh, madam, yes. I am madam. Madam, madam. Now, let them in and apologise for the house being so untidy. Yes. I'll be in the bedroom. Oh, yes, OK. <laughs> Hello, there. <laughs> <coughs> The madame of this disorderly house <laughs> is a rate for you in her bedroom. <laughs> madame, you've got your first customer. <laughs> no, no. Hmm? I'm Mr. Nichols and this is Mrs. Nichols. Oh, oh, oh nice bit clumpet, yeah. Right. <laughs> he miss her knickers and she misses knickers. Thank you in a moment. Help yourself to a drink. Thank you. <laughs> I think she means us. Oh, so sorry. Oh, you have a double chin. I beg your pardon? You have a double chin. You have a double chin? Oh, double chin. <laughs> yeah. Or you can have water with we. With what? With we. It's spelt with a we, not with a wobble you. <laughs> Darlings, how lovely to see you. It's been ages. Have a drink. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. you. Oh, so sorry, so sorry. You got another customer. Not customer. Client. Another passenger. Punter. Huh? <laughs> My hat. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Check it, check it, check it. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Too bloody small for me, isn't it? Wow. George, Margaret, lovely to see you. I say, I like your dress. Oh, just a little something I ran up. <laughs> you nearly fell off the top. <laughs> Drop of something here, George. Wouldn't mind a little drinky poo. How about a spot of Harry Shampers? <laughs> Dinky bloody poo? <laughs> Harry Breeden Shampers? What kind of a pirate is that? <laughs> what a pronker. <laughs> Lime. Raga and rhyme? Now you mutter me up. I'm not sure what you do. Oh, mutter up. I not know what it's vodka. That's not vodka. It's gin. That's a vodka. And, ooh, I feel thick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should 
Excuse me. Oh, Robert, you messy you are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Keep still. Right. Your wife like a drink, yes? She's not my wife. I haven't got a wife. Oh. Who lay for you? <laughs> I beg your pardon. I say, who lay for you? <laughs> hip, hip, who lay for you? <laughs> You a bachelor, right? Your father. <laughs> I'll do that. Oh, Thank you. All right, all right. Get ready, get out of the way, will you? <laughs> the agency has said they'd send someone round straight away. I'm sorry about this. Charles, switch the stove off under the minestrone. What? Turn the soup out on the stove. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of you. <laughs> Constable, oh, yes. Bless my soul, bun fam. <laughs> what jolly titties we're having. <laughs> oh, yes. Queen Elizabeth, very good man. No. Three cheers for Tottenham hot pants. <laughs> <laughs> Rook, come get in. Oh, my <laughs> bosom friend, chow. Oh, nice to see you again. Oh. Have a drink. You can have clap, Harry. <laughs> not, not, not for me. No, okay. <laughs> oh, you can have some wine. We've got a nice wine here. It's a cross between Moselle and Hock. Oh, what is it called? Muck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't take your nuts on them. They all bloody drunk. <laughs> Another thing. What is the idea 
go. <laughs> Could you keep the noise down? Why don't you stop drinking for my sake? I don't drink for your sake. I drink for mine. <laughs> Why do you drink so much? It's cheaper than sending you to a beauty parlor. <laughs> and you haven't emptied the garbage. You emptied it. You cooked it. <laughs> Morning, I'll never know. What do you suppose the neighbors would think if I ran around the house half naked? They'd think I married you for your money. <laughs> what figures in bigger lumps in porridge? <laughs> oh, that's my foot! Then why don't you put your foot where it belongs? <laughs> don't tempt me! Why don't you put a shirt and tie on? Because nobody don't never come here. Then what you got your hat on for? Well, you never know. <laughs> they might. You keep wearing a hat all the time, you'll go bald. If I'm wearing a hat all the time, no one will know, will they? your new neighbor. What? We've just moved here next door. Why don't you answer the damn door? You... Oh, oh, pardon me. <laughs> your wife? Would I have a maid as ugly as that? <laughs> come, come. I think she's rather attractive. <laughs> Would you like to go sit down? Oh, thank you. Watch out. There's a step there. Uh, Watch it. Okay. <laughs> Hello. This is, this is the limey from next door. Your new neighbor. Drew called me Henry. I'm Miriam, and this is Barney. <laughs> would you like some coffee? Hard guy. <laughs> well, would you like to take a load off your mind and sit down? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, um, <clears throat> you may find that my wife and I will take a little bit of getting used to. We're sort of unconventional. What they're called uh, bohemians. <laughs> bohemians, yeah. I've got a little peccadillos. <laughs> I find that very hard to believe, Henry. I really do. I mean, none of us are perfect. <laughs> and where are what um, you people call swingers? You know, two's company, three's a crowd, and four's a lot more fun. If you're brought by it. You was lucky to find us at home. Well, I overheard you talking. Oh! <laughs> That was just a little lover's tip. <laughs> Actually, Barney wouldn't swap me for anything. Oh, pity. <laughs> hey, do, do you mean what I think you mean? A change is as good as a rest. I know, but quite honestly, you know, that is a situation into which I have never entered into. I don't even know that I could go along with anything like that. <laughs> Next door. <laughs> of course, it's got to be a first time for everything. <laughs> oh, hi. Let me introduce you to Lorraine. This is Miriam and Barney. Would you like some coffee? <laughs> well, who is going to be mother? Well, not me, that's for sure. Don't start that again. Uh, I can't stay long. I'm off to Greenwich Village in a minute. Uh, sugar widow without. Without. Shopping? Oh, no such luck. Uh, cream widow without. Without. No, I'm off to model for a painter. <laughs> With or without? Without. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You great idiot! It's okay. It'll all be coming off in a minute. <laughs> 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 Well, we seem to be getting along fine, and uh, we get along okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, when you've been married to the same woman for uh, a few years, you uh, begin to fancy a change. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, fancy something.
to something uh, a little different. <laughs> what the hell are you getting there? I mean, we could swap wives. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Only temporarily, of course. I mean, I know you wouldn't want to part with your Miriam forever, now, would you? No. <laughs> I really fancy your Miriam. I just love a romp in the hay with her. Henry, I have to, but you! <laughs> what do you say? Well, I don't know. It's, it's, it's wrong. Who says it's wrong? Well, my doctor, for a start, he, he said I shouldn't make love to anybody except my wife. He said I wasn't to get excited. <laughs> I know it. Nonsense! Do you the world of good? Oh, oh just trying off. <laughs> Supposing she doesn't agree? Oh, she will. I know my wife. Uh, once I get your Miriam next door and try a little bit of the old charm, uh, do your best for me. I think I'll go and find the little boy's room. Yeah, but start the corridor, Henry. You can't miss it. I'll try not to. <laughs> Say, they're a lovely pair, aren't they? <laughs> oh, God, are they ever a lovely pair? Oh, a lovely couple, yes, yes. He's nice, he likes you. <laughs> no, I kind of like him. Uh, he said he's got some new contemptible furniture in his apartment that you might like to go and have a look at. <laughs> Barney says you uh, you got something to show me. <laughs> uh, come on next door and have a look. Oh. <laughs> Don't hurry back. Okay. Oh. Much time, does he? I'll tell you something else more, don't I? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll like my mummy. <laughs> like your, your, your mummy? <gasps> Didn't Daddy tell you? That was your father? Holy cow, I didn't. I don't know, my God! But I do mind. I'll be like that in 30 years' time. In 30 years' time, I won't care! <laughs> Here. Yeah? I made this for you. You made that? Yes. Oh, that's I make my own wine and brew do? my own beer. How about that? It's my hobby. Is it? Oh. <laughs> What's your hobby? Glass blowing. Glass blowing? Yeah. <laughs> Here, I bake this special for you. Mm. You must try some of that. Oh, mm, that is. Mm, that, mm, 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 mm. Oh, that is so clever. Oh, we're going to get on so well together. Oh, I love bowling. Miriam never liked bowling. Good noon, men after ladies, gentle bodies. <laughs> and a very well warm come <laughs> to our chumps in Great Britain. <laughs> to the kleiner babakins, <laughs> to the motors, and the fathers. <laughs> To the gross mutters and the gross fathers? <laughs> and when I say the gross father, I don't mean a gross father, so, so, I mean the father of the father. <laughs> Here at the Herbert Strasser University, situated as it is in the backside of Hamburg, <laughs> we are discussing the British way of life, the British people, and getting to know you. <laughs> Sind Sie all set and comfortable ish? <laughs> then ich will begin. <laughs> the British man is very fond of ladies with the two lovely hemispheres. The lovely ladies of the two hemispheres. But you wouldn't know it because he is so shy and retiring. <laughs> I give you a for instance, a young man is walking along the quayside at Cows in the eye of Widget. <laughs> Where are sailing the yachts? Who <laughs> is these lying on the beach? A young girl of some 17 summers and 48 winters. 
mit der schönen Figur, <lacht> mit den kleinen Sitzen und den großen Titzen. <lacht> Und she is almost wearing an itsy bitsy teeny weeny bikini. She is practically naked. <lacht> und what does he do? He says good morning and he goes on his way. His heart is thumping so much that his kidneys are saying, stop dancing up there. <lacht> a red corpuscle turns to a white corpuscle and says, what's everybody rushing around for? <laughs> but he says, good morning, and he goes on his way, because he does not want to cockroach upon her privacy. <laughs> you are not listening! <laughs> cockroach upon her privacy? <laughs> hen crouch upon her privacy? <laughs> you must use the feminine hen. Do not use the masculine cock. <laughs> but you are assuming that I am speaking correctly. You must never assume. Because when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> At this moment in, my, moment in time, <laughs> the typical British man is probably sitting in the privy of his own home, <laughs> watching this television show. <laughs> but he is very hospitable, and if you are alone in London, he will take you out to see the sights, see the horse cart parade, <laughs> the zoological gardens in a recent spark, <laughs> Cleopatra's noodle, <laughs> take you to law courts, where true and honest justice is dispensed with. <laughs> then he will take you to a nightclub, restaurant, champagne, supper, back to his apartment. Won't charge you anything. You can stay the night there. I know this is true. It happened to my sister. <laughs> you see? But if you drive into the West End of London by yourself, be very careful. If you park your car, they will give you a ticket. They should give you a bloody medal. <laughs> If you have a three-course meal after the meal, you will want an after-dinner mint. <laughs> you will need an after-dinner mint to pay for the bill. <laughs> if the waiter comes along at your table, tell him, piss off, cake. <laughs> <laughs> because the British have not yet conquered inflation. <laughs> we, of course, have conquered inflation, just as we conquered Poland and Czechoslovakia. And that British dictator, and that British government, the real close down captain. You are not informing this dick yet, Skidor. Deutschland, Deutschland over the last, Deutschland over the last. I'm sorry. I got carried away a little bit. <laughs> anyway, it's been nice being with you. Thank you, all, and, and good night. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> They're called Grosen. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Two of the world's top agents, but unfortunately, they work for the other side. But the BBC? A certain Eastern power. <laughs> Who shall be nameless? Ah, Russia. <laughs> uh, they have in their possession the entire plan of the next NATO exercise. A microfilm no bigger than a postage stamp. But how do you read it? You lick it and stick it on your eyeball. <laughs> you it, get it back before it falls into the hands of... You know who. Russia. <laughs> he keeps it in a snuffbox. A snuffbox? A small, anti-magnetic, bulletproof silver snuffbox. Now, he knows what you look like. But, being a master of disguise, I'm sure that won't worry you, Mervyn. Ha, ha, ha. Skipper, sounds to me like a job for... Old Ben Achman. Good night, sir. Good night, Mervyn. 
I'm giving you an assistant. I don't need an assistant. I don't need an assistant. I need an assistant. I need an assistant. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> Ich 
Did you make out, Mervyn? I was too smart for that pair, Skipper. <laughs> Hand it over! You don't think I'd carry it about on my person, do you? Search him thoroughly. Search him? <laughs> Why waste time? I'm sure he hasn't got it on him. Well, you can't be sure, can you? I mean, I, 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 I don't know that till you have a little, little ferret about something. I mean, you don't... Oh, I, I might have it. I might, very I, well. I might have it on me, might not. I mean, I might. <laughs> Nothing there? Thank you very much. <laughs> A little one. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Hmm. I think they're trying to say something. This wine, what they've done to you. Hey, they done to you. I get a light. Hey. Just about this is not nice of you, that kid. It's this bloody snuff box. Hey, come back! Hey! Stop him! Don't go! Come here! <laughs>
gentlemen, and welcome to another hour of melody and rhythm. And where have you been? You've been to put a little fire out all by yourself. <laughs> Couldn't have been much of a fire, could it? You ain't got host bite. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> a little fellow like you? Where was the fire? On the roof. <laughs> How did you manage to reach up there then? She held it for you. <laughs> While your brother was passing water in a bucket, <laughs> to you up the ladder, she held it for you. Well done, and you should be. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as a tribute to Fire Brigades everywhere, we bring you the Fire Brigade song. I have got a bell, I have got a bell, I have got a bell, what shall I do with it? Oh, ding it with your donger, ding it with your donger, ding it with your donger, and let's put out the fire. I have got a ladder, I have got a ladder, I have got a ladder, what shall I do with it? Oh, keep my still while we climb up. I have got a chopper, I have got a chopper, I have got a chopper, so let's put a chopper. Oh, get it out and chop away, get it out and chop away, get it out and chop away, and let's put out the fire. I have got a hose pipe, I have got a hose pipe, I have got a hose pipe, what can I do with this? Stick it up the chimney, stick it up the chimney, stick it up the chimney, and let's put out the fire. And let's put out the fire. Thank you kindly. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Fireman Buchanan steps up to the microphone to give you his version of Robin Hood. <laughs> And Nottingham, the sheriff, has made off with all the gold in the neighborhood. But the sheriff hasn't reckoned with that dashing, brave and bold. And of Robin Hood!
Absolute power corrupts absolutely. <laughs> that is the story of Robin Hood. <laughs> Me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us and we look forward to seeing you again real soon. Until then, bye-bye, God bless, take care of yourselves. And Slapstick. It aired for over three decades on British television and for over ten years it was a syndicated hit on American TV. It was a show that was full of wacky, buffoon-like characters, ridiculous chase scenes, loads of double entendres, and of course the immensely lovable Benny Hill himself. His show was as British as tea and biscuits. It separated itself from Monty Python, which employed more cerebral humor by presenting viewers with jokes and gags that didn't require an Oxford education to get. Sure, a lot of the humor was lowbrow, but Hill's unique brand of comedy made him one of the most popular performers in the world. Who was Benny Hill? Benny Hill's birth name was Alfred Hawthorne. He was born January 21, 1924, in Southampton, England. Before he discovered his affinity for comedy, he worked several odd jobs to get by. He was a talented drummer and worked for a time as an assistant stage manager. He adopted the name Benny partly inspired by one of his comedic idols, Jack Benny. After WW2, Hill performed on a radio show called Variety Bandbox. He made his TV debut in the review Here's Mud in Your Eye in 1950. Hill was actually the first British comedian to find fame through television. The BBC recognized that he was wildly gifted as a comedian and hired him on for another review show called Hi There in 1951. The Benny Hill Show premiered in 55 and appeared on the BBC until 1968. In 1969, Hill signed a contract with Thames Television. For its entire run, Hill retained the majority control of the show's direction and penned the majority of its scripts and music. The show was similar to a vaudeville production. The Benny Hill Show was formatted like a variety show. Each episode started out with one or two quickies that were short, witty sketches. After that, there was an opening ballad or monologue and musical number. After the innuendo-packed musical ballad, the show would follow up with various sketches, acts, guest spots, and fake blooper reels. Every episode ended with an absurd chase scene set to the Yakety Sax theme music. This bit would feature various members of the cast, in addition to stock characters like cops, priests, and old ladies in hot pursuit of Hill. The show also featured hot young models known as Hill's Angels or occasionally his Hee Haw Honeys. Hill's Role on the Show Benny played numerous characters, but most of them were pretty dim-witted. A common theme was for his characters to be constantly looking for love but routinely having no success. While some of his characters attempted to do things like look up women's skirts, they were always whacked in the head for attempting such a morally bankrupt act. His most popular character, Fred Scuttle, was a jolly social chap who tried out a whole bunch of different jobs over the years. It was a global hit. In the 70s, the show expanded to international markets. It began to air in over 140 countries, including the US. The show was widely appealing to many different types of people. It wasn't an intellectual comedy, so it was a lot more accessible to viewers of all age groups and education levels. The series had a close connection to the form of physical comedy made popular by Charlie Chaplin, who happened to be one of Hill's biggest influences. Chaplin also had an appreciation for Hill's work as well. He reportedly had a collection of rare recordings of The Benny Hill Show in his possession. Slapstick, double entendre, burlesque, and visual gags kept The Benny Hill Show going. Its amusing scripts were sprinkled with biting one-liners that demonstrated Hill's perfect comedic timing. He was also known for his ridiculously goofy facial expressions, which proved to be one of his biggest comedic assets as well. Hill's Success Outside of Television Benny Hill couldn't be confined by the bounds of the television screen. He was also an accomplished film star. He appeared in films like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and The Italian Job while he was still producing his hit TV show. One of Benny's biggest loves was music and songwriting. He also wrote music for more shows than just his own. Several of his tunes even ended up charting. Ernie, the fastest milkman in the West, even ended up becoming a number one hit. 
Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications and stay tuned to find out which celebrities are huge Benny Hill fans. It couldn't survive the changing times. Even though The Benny Hill Show enjoyed continuous success during its tenure on the air, Thames Television canceled it in 1989. They cited rising production costs and slipping ratings as the primary reason. But in reality, the show was probably dropped because of the changing social and political climate at the time. Political correctness was on the rise and the show was beginning to be accused of sexism. The Benny Hill Show continued to be profitable years after it was canceled. Three years after Thames pulled the plug, they invited Benny back to stage a return to the airwaves, but he passed away before production could begin. Before he died, Hill released one last special in 1991 titled Benny Hill in New York. Benny Hill's Lonely End Even though he was a celebrity of global fame, Hill kept pretty much to himself. Very few people had anything bad to say about him. He lived a humble life, refusing to spend his substantial wealth on frivolous things. He never owned a car or a house. He wore secondhand clothes until they were completely worn out. He never married or had kids and passed away alone in his apartment on April 20th, 1992. He died from a heart attack and was found two days later sitting in his favorite recliner in front of his TV. Before his death, he was treated as an outcast. By the late 80s, Hill's comedy routine was increasingly being labeled as sexist, smutty, and politically incorrect. But Hill's good friend and TV critic Gary Bushell thought his friend was being unfairly treated. People were depicting him as some kind of sexist monster, but if you actually watched the show, you'd find that the men were most often targets of his humor. They were always inadequate in some shape or form and prone to bumbling about, running into lampposts, getting slapped, and embarrassing themselves on a regular basis. It was always the women that ended up having the upper hand. Bushell believes Hill's comedy was harmless. If anything, he was drawing attention to sexism by lampooning it, not by embracing it. Statue Campaign Following his death, a commemorative plaque was put up on display at the site of his old school, Taunton's College on Hill Lane, as a memorial to his life and accomplishments. Sure, some might find some of Hill's comedy to be fairly controversial to today's standards, but it provides students of comedy with the opportunity to observe how tastes and humor have changed and developed over the years. Benny's old buddy, Jerry Bushell, has been behind the efforts to erect a statue to honor the comedian. Unfortunately, the project has stalled. The city of Southampton is open to the statue being erected, but they're unwilling to commit any tax dollars to its construction. The fate of the statue is currently in limbo. There is a fundraising effort that has been organized to get the project off the ground, but to date, it has yet to bring in the needed funds to make it a reality. Benny's high-profile fan base Benny has quite a few celebrity fans of his comedy that have been pretty outspoken about their appreciation for his contributions to comedy. We already mentioned Charlie Chaplin, but there were quite a few other big-time contemporary entertainers who saw Benny as a visionary. Johnny Carson and his sidekick Ed McMahon were both famous fans of Hill's material and tried repeatedly to get him to come to LA to be a guest on Carson's talk show. Hill always declined their offers, however, saying he didn't want to travel all the way to California just for a TV spot. Adam Carolla has also repeatedly mentioned on his radio and TV shows that he's a huge fan of Hill. He was once quoted as saying he believed Benny Hill to be as American as the Beatles. Carolla has also played tribute to Hill on The Man Show. Michael Jackson was another celeb to idolize Benny Hill. He told a member of the British press during one of his tours in the 70s that he loved Benny Hill and thought he was extraordinarily funny. Prog rock band Genesis featured Hill as his character Fred Scuttle in the video for their 1987 hit single, Anything She Does. Other self-admitted famous Benny Hill fans include Burt Reynolds, Mickey Rooney, Walter Cronkite, and Anthony Burgess. Most recently, Snoop Dogg admitted to being a big Benny Hill fan in a 2011 interview with The Observer. The world lost a comedic treasure in 1992 when Benny Hill passed away. Sure, some of his humor isn't quite up to today's politically correct standards, but he was a groundbreaking visionary for his time. His show was one of the biggest success stories in British television history and at one point was one of the most watched TV programs of all time. We'd love to hear from you. Which British sketch comedy show do you enjoy the most? The Benny Hill Show or Monty Python's Flying Circus?